It is time for another Mukbang Monday. Are you excited? I know I am. I'm about to chow down. Um, I'm having a chicken sandwich and some french fries with uh, ranch up, which is the combination of ranch and ketchup. Not completely mixed, just kind of half and half in the bowl. I'm not going to tell you from where because I don't do free advertising. I don't, if fast food places want me to advertise for them, I would be more than happy to have them message me via email. So until then, you get my fun little keep going bottle with my LGBT, my little bit, my quoi. What's that? What's that word that everybody came up? Legitimate quoi? Legitimate quoi. Good sounds. Okay. <clears throat> so, we've got a spicy chicken sandwich. And some french fry. Yummy french fry. Mmm. Normally, um, getting a fast food, a fast food, <laughs> a singular fast food, um, I opt for burgers, but this time around I just kind of felt like chicken. So, I'll show you it. Most likely you will recognize the sandwich if you are a frequenter of this particular establishment. But there she is in all her juicy, thick glory. We love to see it. And, um, is there chips in this? Oh, there's chips in this. I didn't realize. Okay. We're going to, this is a new sandwich for me. This is not something I typically order. Okay. So we've got like croutony type chips and corn nuts. Okay. Work. Um, I've never seen corn nuts on a sandwich before, so I figured I'd show you, because that's interesting. You see that? Those are corn nuts, bitch. Corn nuts and chips. Corn chips. It's all on, like, one side of the burger, too, <laughs> or the sandwich. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess that's good, though, because then half of the sandwich can be the corn nut half, and then the other half of the sandwich can just be what I thought it was going to be, which was just chicken, spicy sauce, lettuce, and tomato. Um, so, you know what? We're just going to be adventurous. I've never tried this before. I've never thought of putting this on this uh, particular type of sandwich or the, having this texture. We're just going to see what happens. So, cheers. Okay. Mm hmm It's definitely corn nuts. I can taste it. <laughs> mm. Mm. The chicken's good. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> I genuinely don't know how to feel in this moment. Um, oh, I got spicy sauce on me. It's dripping. A drip, drip, dripping. It's not bad, um, but it's not great. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this sandwich. I don't think it's the first thing you need to be running to the to the burger place to get. But it's not bad. <laughs> hmm. Look at that. It's not bad. Hmm. The sauce is good, though. This little, like, chipotle moment they're having. I like her. That's good. Things are looking good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's good. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think, like I said, it wouldn't be my go-to order. But would I get it again? Probably. Probably. Look at it. Mmm. 
Get a serviette and clean our dirty mouth. Mm. So, some good news, baby bird. I landed a part time job. I know, right? Finally. <laughs> so, I'm going to be working the night shift at a grocery store. I am not 100% certain on what exactly I'm doing, but. I was able to make my stance very clear that I do not want to be a cashier and I absolutely do not want to work in the front um, and that if they need a closer, I'm on it. So thankfully this person, <clears throat> the person who interviewed me actually listened to me. I know, go figure, but she did. And it was great. So she hired me after the interview, like on the spot, offered me a position, which hasn't happened in a long time for me. So that was like a huge relief. And it was so nice to, to finally sit in front of someone that is a part of society that everybody accepts right now, right? Like a, a cisgendered white woman, right? Not saying that she doesn't have her own life struggles or anything, but for the most part in society, she doesn't have to worry about what everybody thinks of her and people are going to tend to be more trusting toward her than someone like me, right? But for her to look at me and give me grace, listen to me, tell me things about like that she's hearing about me that she really admires or likes... Um, and I was able to navigate all of her interview questions, which was awesome. Cause normally I struggle so much in coming up with the right answer, you know, and, um, so it was nice to, it was nice to just have a conversation with an adult I'd never met before and not be met with any judgments or any stories about the trans people that they know or any like I'm an ally like type of thing I, I don't, don't get me wrong I don't hate those people or anything by any stretch of the means I'm always happy that you want to out yourself as an ally and you want to make sure that I know of anybody that's like me you want to make sure that we know excuse me that we can um talk to you right? It's a beautiful sentiment. I did it too when I thought I was an ally. <laughs> um, my issue is that it seems to be the only point of conversation that a lot of people who think that they're allies seem to have is to just tell me that they're an ally and then have nothing further to add to the conversation. Um, or they just tell me a story about the trans people that they know. So, and I get it to a degree. You're trying to like pull threads to conversate with me, to make sure and affirm with me that I know that you are kind and you're an ally and I don't need to be scared of you. And I do appreciate it. But when it's, when it happens to you at every turn, every day with every one that you encounter, it really becomes a tired topic. It's a tired topic of conversation. It's, it's the same with like talking about diets or your weight loss journey. Like whenever anybody tries to talk about their weight loss journey with a fat person, I'm always just kind of like wrong crowd, babe. <laughs> you want to talk about your diet? Go talk about it with the people who are doing it. That's your, that's your focus group. That's the group of people you want to be grabbing the attention of. Not me. Because I'm still out here eating fast food. I'm nowhere near where your progress is. So, if anything, I'll be a bad influence on you. And you don't need that when you're trying to focus, right? So don't tell me about your diet. Go find some friends that are doing it with you. 
I'm sure they'll be very interested to know how you're coping, right? Because they're going to want to talk to people to talk about how they're coping. Mmm. Mmm. I put a french fry in the spicy sauce. That was a good idea. <clears throat> Again, I don't super love the corn nuts, but I, I don't hate them either. I think this is supposed to be like a jalapeno roll, but I'm not really tasting that either. No. Oh, the sauce, sauce is drippy. Mm. <laughs> it's drippy Swiss. Mm. I know I just came to you last week with a burger. <laughs> and now here I am eating a another burger-like substance. But we are neurodivergent friendly on this channel. And we are autistic as fuck. So... I'm not going to be out here trying new foods all the time. Plus, I can't afford to. So, I'm going to eat what I have. And if I'm gifted fast food or other food, then I'm going to eat that. Right? Plus, this isn't your typical mukbang. This is a mukbang for people who struggle to eat. Like me. Um, and you also have to be able to see people eat fast food that are not skinny I've, I've got them pounds packed on baby bird okay I'm thick I'm built like a cupcake and I like it that way um and I want you to watch I want you to see me eating and realize that you can be fat and have to eat you still have to eat even when you're fat your body still needs the food and the calories and the fats and the vitamins in order to be able to function and for you to coherently think every day you can't starve yourself into being a better version of yourself. You will only make yourself worse. So you need to eat. And the only reason I know that for sure, the only reason I can, like, I can like talk so confidently like that is because I lived it, babe. You don't think I've been out here skipping meals, acting like I forget to eat? Acting like I don't feel my hunger pangs. Pretending that a salad with barely half a cucumber is enough to get through the whole day. Or that I just skip out on enjoying anything like coffee or juice because I just want to have water. I love water. Okay? I'm a water autistic. I'm a water bender. Me and water, we are tight. Literally. Just recently, I, unbap I unbaptized myself in the ocean and I, I reclaimed my soul from the Christian God because my biological and adoptive parents both baptized me and dedicated my soul to God without my consent. And I took it back. I said, no, no more. God ain't never done nothing for me but put me through hell. I don't want him to have my soul. I'm taking it back. So I did. And you know what I did? I took it back. And I rededicated my soul to the earth, to our beautiful, wonderful blue planet. I gave myself to the water and I told her that may my body, when it is buried and laid, enrich you further and disintegrate into dust that provides nutrients to her soil. Amen. Okay. I'm not about to sacrifice myself to a God that has never been present in my life. I'd rather give myself to my planet, who's been there for me, who has held my feet as I've walked, who's held my head as I've had to rest and sleep outside, who's given us a beautiful sunset and sunrise just about every single fucking day I've been alive, to the planet that provides me a safety net and comfort when the people that live in it don't. That give us trees that make us breathe. Like the earth is such a gorgeous goddess. And the fact that we don't all completely worship her. It's insulting, frankly. This is our only planet. I know the rich are trying to get on their rockets and get out of here. But this is ours. This is our place. And it's beautiful. And it's special. And it made us. Primates have walked the earth for thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years. 
beautiful, incredible, almost indescribable creatures have lived on this planet. Hundreds of thousands, millions of years, this planet has existed and brought life throughout so many generations. And it's fantastical when you look into the history of Earth, not just human history, but the recorded history of our planet and what she's brought us and what she's grown and what she's birthed and what she's truly capable of. And the fact that humanity gets to exist in her and only her that we've found so far, I just think that's so beautiful. So I dedicated my soul to the earth since that's where I'm going to end up when I die anyway. Mm. So, <clears throat> if you're a bit of um, like an agnostic sort of atheist, which I think, I think that's where I've landed, right? I was raised in a mega, mega church, hyper super cult. I got married right out of high school to this guy. Who, ugh, I don't, I'm not even going to talk about him. He's disgusting. Um, um, everything about who I was was just a mistake, was a fault in me growing up in this environment. But the ocean never made me feel like that. <clears throat> and you know, <clears throat> the sun may have burned me before, right? But that's only because we have harmed the beautiful layer that our planet made for us to protect us from that giant star in the first place. I just think like, if you're an agnostic, atheist or someone who just really doesn't believe in a god or gods in a sense but you are looking to like find a way to live in gratitude and like like who do you have to thank I say thank the planet you know instead of thank god oh thank the earth why not why is it any weirder than saying thank god Especially if you've never known God, if you grew up in a life that didn't surround the Lord or the Trinity or anything like that, and you're always kind of like, oh, thank God when you say something about it, thank the earth, <clears throat> oh, thank the planets, or the planets are aligned, you know, just things like that. I think that it might, it, it's already doing a lot to improve my mental state, the fact that I thank the earth for growing all the food that I get to eat that's not like, you know, fast food, but the water that I get to drink, the water that flows through my body, we're 80% water, we are water beings, we live on a water planet. I just, I find it so scrumptious and gorgeous. And I think that you should too, because this is your planet as much as it is mine. And isn't that fascinating? Isn't that incredible that we all are born without consent? <laughs> I know I didn't ask to be put here. Um, despite the hardship, there are lots of us, you know, who can go to a park or a forest or the beach and sit and um, look at the trees or look at the water, look at the nature that grows out of our planet. And it just soothes us. She just holds us. And I'm the type of autistic that was deep knee, uh, deep, deep knee, <coughs> knee deep, deeply neglected. <clears throat> so one of my favorite feelings is to be held. I love being held. Sometimes I need it to be like, oh, like crazy, super, super tight so that I can feel like my soul is in my body and it's safe. And other times I just like to be held because I like to feel like I'm important. When you hold people, you make them understand that you are safeguarding them, that you care about them, that you love them, and that you want to make sure that they feel that from you. And that's what holding people feels like for me. That's what it feels like every time somebody chooses to actively hold me. It's my favorite, favorite thing in the world, that humans hug. 
I love that we do that. It's one of my favorite things. I know it's not for everyone. Some of my best friends are people who cannot be touched, and I respect that. But I also think it's very beautiful that there are so many of us who love to be held and who love to hold each other. And you know what? I have been putting myself in relationships, specifically romantic ones, where that didn't happen a lot. I didn't get held. I didn't get cuddled. I didn't have anything except someone to hold my hand. And as nice as that can be, it's nicer to be in a long embrace and not have someone get bored. They're so wrapped up in hugging you that they don't care how long it takes. People who wait for you to break the hug, I also deeply appreciate. So if you're a physically affectionate person in that format, just know that I, I really, I love you. <laughs> I like what you're about. I like that. So don't stop. Um, but if you do come across people who don't like it, don't try to pre pressure them into liking it. You will never win that argument. And you shouldn't try because it's not up to you what someone else's tolerance is. It's up to you to respect whatever they tell you it is. Okay? So, anyway. I'm having a lot of good revelations. I'm feeling hopeful for the first time in a while. A long while, as you've seen. I've been crying all up and down this channel for a year. Um, and I'm excited to see... What's going to happen for me? In addition, we'll go a little over time today. In addition, um, <clears throat> one of the baby birds in this nest has given me advice on how to make a resume, uh, an actor's resume, and um, a couple of different options for where I can put up like a reel of my capabilities when it comes to like voiceover work or reading. Shout out to you. <clears throat> and he works for a production company that's of that sort, voiceovers, acting, singing, that type of stuff. Um, but he's not based in America. So who knows if I'll ever actually get to work with him. I don't know when they would need an American accent, you know. All that to say, I am learning about how to pursue the avenues that I want to pursue, which is sketch comedy, improv, um, performance art, but mostly just being friendly. My whole goal here is not to eventually get advertisers and influence you into being someone that you're not. My goal is to be on your screen because I'm an enjoyable person who wants you to like yourself exactly as you are. I want to take over for Fred Rogers. I really do just want to spend my time in front of people, showing them how I learned to love me, and then passing on that example to the best of my ability and knowledge to you. Because you deserve to live your life in a space where you like yourself. You are the only one who has to deal with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not even your spouse gets you 100% of the day, 100% of the time. Not even your children. It may feel like it, but they don't, <clears throat> right? Because they don't know you until they start getting to know you. And they don't learn how to do that until they're way older. Which is fine, because if our kids tried to really grasp who we were as adults in their little baby minds, it would make them grow up fast. And you don't want that. People need to develop in their own way, which is slow. They need to be slow. Slow life, slow development, slow movement, just nice and slow. Because you don't need to be constantly going and going and going at this fast pace, unethical, impossible pace that has been set for so many of us. There's no reason. You don't need to be doing all that. You don't need to be doing all that. You need to eat your meals. You need to brush your teeth. You need to look out for one another. And you need to know that even at your worst, you are still very worthy of love. And it took me 30 years before I finally really grasped onto that. I'm going to be 33 at the end of this month. 
crazy, right? And I gotta say, I could not be happier to be further from my 20s. You could not pay me to go back. Um, but it's still just so wild to me because I feel like I only, I feel like I genuinely only just recently grew up. And maybe I did to an extent. I really feel like your 20s are not just about experimenting and making mistakes. It's all learning. You're such a sponge right now in your 20s, baby bird. If you were in your 20s, my advice is observe, observe, observe. Because not everybody's looking at you. I know you think that they are. Everybody thinks that they're, that, you know, they're the main character of your own story. You are. You're the main character of your own story. And thusly, when you are immersed in big social situations, the best thing you can do for yourself is observe people and ask them compelling questions. Try to come up with interesting topics to talk about. Ask them questions that you would ask your best friend. Sometimes when you do that kind of stuff, it opens the, the platform for vulnerability and it offers this person a new and exciting way to conversate with another person. So, all right. Keep going. You're doing great, sweetie. I'll keep you posted about how things go at my job if you're interested in that. Um, would you like and subscribe for me if you haven't already done so? And maybe share this with a friend? Uh, I'm going to try and keep up with posting mukbangs on Mondays. I won't always remain consistent because I'm what? Mentally ill. That is right, baby bird. So, and then now that I've got a part-time job coming up, I will be more exhausted, especially in the beginning of this whole thing. So we'll see what happens, but I will do my best for you and I will catch you on the next one. All right. Bye baby bird.